Android, our beautiful, beautiful Android. One of its biggest selling points has been customization. And these days, almost every brand offers the regular theming engine, icon paths, etc. Samsung though goes one step further with Goodlock, which is their in-depth customization app. In the past, we've seen how it works and all the functionality that it brings to the table. Now in 2021, Samsung has added a few more features to Goodlock. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at all these new features. How to customize the crap out of your Samsung smartphone. Good luck 2021, here we go. Let's start with a little bit of a refresher. Highlights of some features the new Good Luck shares with the old one. One, quick start. For status bar customization, this decides the icons permitted to live on the status bar. For example, if you want a super clean look, then you can choose to hide the regular Wi-Fi data and battery icons. Even the clock can be hidden. So you can have something that looks like this and this also happens to apply to the lock screen. So basically you get to control what's on the status bar. Number two, clock face, as the name suggests, this lets you go nuts on, well, clock faces. There are a lot of choices with pre-included clock varieties on the lock screen or the always on display functionality. You can even add GIFs if that is what floats your boat. Number three, multi-star, it lets you enable multi-window for all apps. This is one of the features that I really like and it can come in handy as it has real performance implications. Power users who juggle between a ton of uh, complementing apps, they will most definitely appreciate this. Other notable features include resizing the gesture zone to a larger or smaller area. Now from here, you can resize the app, make it a floating window or have it in split screen mode. Number four, Nodi star you see the naming trend, right? Anyways, now this is a notification management service that lets you create a list of apps uh, that are actually allowed to notify you. You can even set keywords that trigger notifications. Uh, you can set it to store notifications for up to a year. So if you swipe something away or clear all by mistake, you know where to look. Moving on, five theme park. Yes, that is what they named it. This is a kind of sort of enthusiast feature. It, al it allows you to create themes, but unlike what you find with other brands, this isn't just click and download themes. Uh, you get to actually create your own theme bit by bit, say, get back to it later. Now, number six, we have nice catch, which is basically a phone log. Every activity performed with your device is logged. So you get a call, it's registered. You get a message, it's recorded. Now, this isn't a notification, just a log for you to go back and uh, check what the heck you've been doing for the last seven days. A rolling period of seven days, by the way. Well, I don't see myself finding it useful. Your mileage may vary. Other returning features include one handed plus, saying edge touch, sound assistant. Uh, now, for a more detailed look at all these features, here's a card to my older video. Now that we're done with the old stuff, let's get started with the new features. There are four new modules. That's what they call them modules. First up, we have Navstar. Click on it and you get a slew of customization options for the navigation button. Now, if you're one of those people who still don't like gestures, it's a much appreciated fresh coat of paint. Uh, it's nothing groundbreaking, but hey, you get to add an additional button uh, to hide the navigation bar should you so choose. It even lets you set a photo in place of a nav button. Like here, we have a pic of a lovely cameraman to act as the back button. Again, it's not groundbreaking, but it's fun. For those of you that don't use nav buttons but prefer gestures, Samsung has you covered too. Using this module, you can change the gesture sensitivity, color, width. So this is basically what you get with Navstar. Next up, we have Home Up. Share Manager is a sub-feature of this module. Let me, let me explain this with an example. Let's say you want to share a photo with a friend. Usually on other devices, when you try to share, it has a bunch of apps you know, that you can share to. It might feature some of the apps you rarely use to share, meaning things do tend to get cluttered. Here with Share Manager, as the name implies, you can manage what shows up when you wanna share something. So here in this example, we wanna share a picture on Slack. Hit Share, it opens Slack automatically since that's the only one we are whitelisted. Now other home app features include home screen customization and the ability to backup and restore home screen settings. Well, we've seen this with third-party launchers like Nova for a long time. It's still cool to have a first party solution. Now moving on, Keys Cafe, and yes, that is what they've chosen to call it. This module has three notable features. Make your own keyboard, pretty self-explanatory, lets you choose between different keyboard layouts. Style your own keyboard, that allows you to select colors, effects, sounds, so you can kind of sort of get your inner Da Vinci out. 
And lastly, we have player keyboard cream. Now this is supposed to make you better at typing. Me personally, I got better at typing by texting, which is what I think most of us do. I mean, I guess you could rather text instead of play a keyboard game, but you know, again, your mileage may vary. What do you think? If you're one of those 30 people who made it this far into the video, let me know. Is texting how you got your typing speed up? And then we have Wonderland. The naming continues to get weird. This one lets you customize wallpapers, live wallpapers. Like here, we pick a photo of the wallpaper and add effects to it to make it a live wallpaper. And the last feature on our list, it's called, wait for it, Pentastic. I think it looks fantastic. This one revolves around S Pen customization. So this feature is only available for your notes in the S21 Ultra. Uh, first, we get a different set of variations of the Air Command menu. We also have a few pointers uh, for the S Pen and you can even get creative with a custom image from your gallery. There's quite a bit of granular control here, so you get to decide the sound when taking out the S Pen. You can choose what happens when you hold down the S Pen's button and double tap on the screen. So that pretty much wraps up Good Luck 2021. What do you guys think? Samsung's usually not known for their software, but Good Luck's been quite exemplary. This is what I had to say the last time we covered Good Luck. I'm impressed here, not just because Samsung's offering these features, but because they're offering these features without making a huge deal about them. The fact that they aren't really marketing these features is probably why these features have ended up being aimed more at the user experience end of things. Uh, the thinking here has been about how to improve the experience but not, I mean, and not about uh, how to make the phone or the software appear cooler. And that's probably the best thing about Good Lock 2.0. And it's pretty much the same thing I have to say here. It feels very user focused and I love what Samsung's serving up here. Uh, what about you? Is this something you see yourself using? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.